welcome to Deerfield Public Library's Twitch channel. I'm Emily. And I'm Anne. And we are reading Twilight by Stephanie Meyer. Anne is jumping in completely, hasn't read this since when? 2006. Yep, since it came out <laughs> in 2006. I so. saw the movie when it came out. I have not engaged with it further. <laughs> so this will be fun, I think. It's going to be a good time. Um, I, if I can try to sum up the last uh, 215 pages of magic so far, um, basically, uh, Bella Sw Isabella Swan, Bella, oh, to okay. everyone else, uh, has moved to Forks, has self-exiled herself to Forks, Washington, to live with her dad, um, who is actually, like, the best character in the I, whole yeah, book. Yeah, I, I remember liking Charlie. Mm -hmm. I was reading this as a teenage girl. <laughs> I would have preferred Charlie. Yeah, as, Charlie. Like, just, just follow him. He's yeah. cool. I like him. No, it would, it, would, it, would, it would go a lot better. But instead, she meets the Cullens, and uh, they are very, a very curious group of uh, siblings, maybe, adopted siblings, um, all very, very beautiful. And then everyone in school is obsessed with her, so she goes on a, a beach trip where she meets Jacob Black and, flirt, right. and flirts with him to get information about the Cullens. So right. maybe uh, laying some groundwork some, for some uh, future books. <laughs> I am aware of what happened. In the Twilight Saga. <laughs> no spoilers. No, just, um, but, and then, yeah, so basically she, then she goes to Port Angeles and almost, like, gets assaulted, but Edward saves her, and now he's, like, coming clean about all this, and she's, like, uh, revealing her theories, and, and uh, yeah, they, they've had their, most of their big serious talk in the car, not okay. in the woods. Right, uh, in the car, not the woods. Yep. So, right now they are pretending to be dating? I don't know. Secretly dating is what they decided in the last chapter. Okay. <laughs> Secretly to everyone. Very but high school. He them. hasn't actually asked her to be his girlfriend yet, but... I did that once. <laughs> I had a boyfriend who wasn't my boyfriend, and then two months after he officially asked me to be his girlfriend, I dumped him. Well, <laughs> well, he's very happy with his husband. If though, only... So. <laughs> <laughs> if only Bella would be so wise. If but, only. <laughs> alas, um, I think we're, I'm going to read chapter Chapter 11, and then Anne will take over for Chapter 12. Get excited. Let's get into it. Mm -hmm. Chapter 11, Complications. Everyone watched as we walked together to our lab table. I noticed that he no longer angled the chair to sit as far from me as the desk would allow. Instead, he sat quite close beside me, our arms almost touching. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, if you're already <laughs> laughing, it's... I, I, I... I'm I in. <laughs> It's very Regency era. Her wrist. Almost, almost touching. That was full touching. This is... Ooh. We're, we've gone from this to electric. electric. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Banner backed into the room then. What superb timing the man had. Pulling a, t a tall metal frame on wheels that held a heavy looking outdated TV and VCR. A movie day. The lift, the class, the lift in the class atmosphere was almost tangible. Mr. Banner shoved the tape into the reluctant VCR and walked to the wall to turn off the lights. And then, as the room went black, I suddenly was hyper-aware that Edward was sitting less than an inch from me. <laughs> I was stunned by the unexpected electricity that flowed through me, amazed that it was possible to be more aware of him than I already was. Uh, a crazy impulse to reach over and touch him, to stroke his perfect face just once in the darkness. <laughs> Sorry. Nearly overwhelmed me. <laughs> I crossed my arms tightly across my chest, my hands balling into fists. I was losing my mind. <laughs> oh, teenage girls. <laughs> the opening credits began, lighting the room by a token by a token amount. My eyes of their own accord flickered to him. I smiled sheepishly as I realized his posture was identical to mine, fists clenched under his arms right down to the eyes, peering sideways at me. We'll say this is very <laughs> accurate, though, to the teenage experience. This is true. <laughs> he's I, in my vicinity. He's, he's just, like, real close. And uh, we had this conversation, are we dating, are we not? Like, oh, do we do PDA? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> he grinned back, his eyes somehow managing to smolder, even in the dark. Uh, I looked away before I could start hyperventilating. It was absolutely ridiculous that I should feel dizzy. At least she's hyper aware. Yeah, at least she's <laughs> hyper aware of it. 
The hours seemed very long. I couldn't concentrate on the movie. I didn't even know what the subject it was. I, I tried unsuccessfully to relax, but the electric current that seemed to be t originating from somewhere in his body never slackened. Occasionally, <laughs> occasionally, I would permit myself a quick glance in his direction, but he never seemed to relax either. The overpowering craving to touch him was also, also reduced to fade, and I crushed my fist safely against my ribs until my fingers were aching with effort. <laughs> Isn't it his whole thing that he finds her fascinating because he like super wants to kill her and drink her blood? Yes, he's, she smells particularly good to right. him. Uh, and she's just having like normal teenage hormones. Girl hormones. <laughs> yes. yeah. And they're acting the same. Exactly. Indeed. <laughs> I don't know who it says more about. <laughs> I mean, I think it says a lot about how Stephanie Meyer feels about her own uh, feelings and emotions. Probably. But, yeah, you know. Maybe. Uh, I breathed a sigh of relief when Mr. Banner flickered the lights back on at the end of class and stretched my arms out in front of me, flexing my stiff fingers. Edward chuckled beside me. Well, that was interesting, he murmured. <laughs> his voice was dark and his eyes were cautious. Um, what? was all I was able to respond. <laughs> it's very romantic. So romantic. Shall we? He asked, rising fluidly. I almost groaned. Time for gym. I stood with care, worried my balance might be affected by the strange new intensity between us. He walked me to my next class in silence and paused at the door. I turned to say goodbye. His face startled me. His expression was torn, almost pained, so fiercely beautiful that the ache to touch him flared as strong as before. My goodbye stuck in my throat. He looks pained, so I want to touch him. So hot. So hot. He raised his hand, hesitant, conflict raging in his eyes, and then swiftly brushed the length of my cheekbone with his fingertips. His skin was as icy as ever, but the trail his fingers left on my skin was alarmingly warm. Like I'd been burned, but I didn't feel the pain of it yet. The hormones. <laughs> he, tur he turned without a word and strode quickly away from me. I walked into the gym, lightheaded and wobbly. I drifted into the, to the locker room, changing in a trance-like state, only vaguely aware that, we were, that there were other people surrounding me. Reality didn't fully set in until I was handed a racket. It wasn't heavy, yet it felt very unsafe in my hands. I could... <laughs> I forgot she's like so clumsy. Oh, clumsy that's her whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that, that's her only character trait. <laughs> clumsy and um, moody. Clumsy or... and moody. Well, so, so every teenager ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, I could see a few of the other kids in class eyeing me fervently. Coach Clapp ordered us to pair up into teams. Mercifully, some vestiges of Mike's chivalry, chivalry still survived. He came to stand beside me. Do you want to be a team? Thanks, Mike. You don't have to do this, you know. I grimaced apologetically. <laughs> don't worry. I'll keep out of your way. He <laughs> grinned. Sometimes it was so easy to like Mike. That's the other thing. Mike, much better. Done yeah. dirty by the mm -hmm. rest of the series. But Truly. Mike, he's a good guy. They, she described him as a golden retriever very early on, and I was like, oh, I'm I mean, a golden retriever. To be fair, that is my type. <laughs> there we go. This explains it. This explains everything. What, who do I like in Twilight? <laughs> Charlie and Mike. There we go. It didn't go smoothly. I somehow managed to hit myself in the head with my racket and clip Mike's shoulder on the same swing. Oh my god. <laughs> I spent the rest of the hour in the back corner of the court, the racket held safely behind my back. Despite being handicapped by me, Mike was pretty good. He won three games out of four single-handedly. He gave me an unearned high five when the coach finally blew the whistle, ending class. Also, gold retriever energy right Very there. Much. <laughs> so, he said as we walked off the court, so what? You and Cullen, huh? He asked, his tone rebellious. <laughs> My previous feeling of affection disappeared. Why well, would it? This is a friend who's probing you for... If Bella's never had friends before. Oh. <laughs> That's none of your business, Mike, oh. I warned. <laughs> And well, also he's like casually like going after Jessica now because right. Jessica like or anyways, but yeah. Yeah, no, it was it's Mike and Jessica is a thing. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, now. So like he he has stopped pursuing <laughs> you. Now he is trying to be a friendly overture. That's like hmm. true. I have done this exact thing to people. I am also a golden retriever. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's none of your business, Mike. I don't like it. He muttered anyways. You don't have to. I snapped. Uh, he looked at you like. Like you're something to eat. Uh, Mike, more perceptive than anyone else. Very. 
He continued ignoring me. (laughs) (laughs) I choked back the hysteria that threatened to explode, but a giggle managed to get out despite my efforts. He glowered at me. I waved and fled to the locker room. I dressed quickly, something stronger than butterflies battering recklessly against the wall of my stomach. What? My argument... My argument... (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) That was good. My... My argument with Mike, already a distant memory. I was wondering if Edward would be waiting or if I should meet him at his car. What if his family was there? I felt a wave of real terror. Did they know that I knew? Was I supposed to know that they knew that I knew or not? This is very friends. That's friends. They don't know. We know they know I know. That was very well done. Yeah. By the time I walked out of the gym, I had just about decided to walk straight home without even looking towards the parking lot, but my worries were unnecessary. Edward was waiting, leaning casually against the side of the gym, his breathtaking face untroubled now. As I walked to his side, I felt a particular sense of relief. Hi, I breathed, Hi. smiling hugely. Hello. He, his, answer, his answering smile was brilliant. How was Jim? My face fell a tiny bit. Fine. I lied. Really? He was unconvinced. His eyes shifted in their focus slightly, looking over my shoulder and narrowing. I glanced behind me to see Mike's back as he walked away. What? I demanded. His eyes slid back to mine, still tight. Newton's getting on my nerves. Uh, Well, maybe you should be nicer. (laughs) You weren't listening again. I was horror struck. All traces of my sudden good humor vanished. How's your head? He asked innocently. You're unbelievable! I turned, stomping away in the general direction of the parking lot, though I hadn't ruled out walking at this point. He kept up with me easily. You were the one who mentioned how I'd never seen you in gym. It made me curious. He didn't sound re- repentant, so I ignored him. I mean, he also was canonically watching her sleep, right? She doesn't know that yet. She doesn't yet. know that yet. But this is your first red flag, girl. <laughs> he skipped class to secretly watch you hit yourself in the head with a racket. Might be a bit of a red flag. I mean, there's a lot of other red flags. This is just the first one I've been present for. <laughs> <laughs> we walked in silence, a furious, embarrassed silence on my part to his car. But I had to stop a few steps away. A crowd of people, all boys, were surrounding it. Then I realized that they weren't surrounding the Volvo. They were actually circling, circled around Rosalie's red convertible, unmistakable lust in their eyes. Yeah. <laughs> None of them even looked up as Edward, Edward slid between them to open his door. I climbed quickly into the passenger side, almost unnoticed. So I just gotta say, there's something like about a family that all brings their own cars to school <laughs> that's just annoying. <laughs> and, and, yeah. yeah, and they've all got like their very fancy cars. Of course. Yes, that <laughs> old vampire money. Well, he, he even says ostentatious. He muttered, yeah. uh, What kind of car is that? I asked. An M3. I don't speak car and driver. It's a BMW. He rolled his eyes, not looking at me, trying to back out without running over the car enthusiasts. I nodded. I'd heard of that one. That brand? <laughs> I've heard of that brand of car before. <laughs> Are you still angry? He asked as he carefully maneuvered his way out. Definitely. He sighed. Will you forgive me if I apologize? I mean... <laughs> Maybe, if you mean it. And if you promise not to do it again, I insisted. It's just such, like, bad instincts. I agree, yeah. The whole instinct to be like, I'm going to watch you secretly <laughs> from afar. <laughs> It's very romantic. Very romantic. Uh. <laughs> His eyes were suddenly shrewd. How about if I mean it and I agree to let you drive Saturday? He countered my conditions. You notice that he said he would never, he did, the thing he dropped was if you promise never to do it again. Oh, well, yes, this is true. We but. should really do Pride and Prejudice so I can show you guys what real romance is. <laughs> <laughs> and so Zoe can finally read Pride and Prejudice. Exactly. <laughs> It would be after quite, our vampire series. <laughs> it would be quite stark. Yeah. Um, I considered and decided it was probably the best offer I would get. Deal. I agreed. Then I'm very sorry I upset you, which is not an apology. That is not an apology, Edward. <laughs> his not eyes, an apology. His eyes burned with sincerity for a pr- protracted moment. You think it's sincere. I think it's <laughs> deceitful. Playing havoc with the rhythm of my heart and then turned playful. And I'll be on your doorstep bright and early Saturday morning. Um, it doesn't help that it wait. 
Um, it doesn't help with the Charlie situation if an unexplained Volvo is left in the driveway. His smile was considerate, condescending now. I wasn't intending to bring a car. So a red flag. How? He cut me off. Don't worry about it. I'll be there. No car. I let it go. I had more pressing question. Is it later yet? I asked significantly. He frowned. I suppose it is later. Once again, we're driving. <laughs> yes. And, and time for a serious conversation because they're in the car. Of course. All serious <laughs> conversations happen in the car. He stopped. I looked up surprised. Of course we were already at Charlie's house. Parked behind the truck. It was easier to ride with him if I only looked when it was over. When I looked back at him, he was staring at me, measuring with his eyes. Are you, are, and you still want to know why you can't see me hunt? He seemed solemn, but I thought I saw a trance of humor deep in his eyes. Well, I clarified, I was mostly wondering about your reaction. Did I frighten you? Yes, there was definitely humor there. No, I lied. Joking he, about frightening you? Also a red flag. Just <laughs> he didn't buy it. I apologize for scaring you. He persisted with a slight smile. Also not apologies. <laughs> But but then all evidence of teasing disappeared. It was just the very thought of you being there while he hunted. His jaw tightened. That would be bad. Yes! <laughs> he spoke between clenched teeth. Extremely. Because he took a deep breath and stared through the window shield at the thick rolling clouds that seemed to press down almost within reach. When we hunt, he spoke slowly, unwillingly. We give ourselves over to our senses, govern less with our minds, essentially our sense of smell. If you were anywhere near me when I lost control that way, he shook his head, still gazing morosely at the heavy clouds. <laughs> I kept my expression firmly under control, expecting the swift flash of his eyes to judge my reaction that soon followed. My, eyes gave no my face gave nothing away. But our eyes held and the silence deepened and changed. Flickers of the electricity I felt this afternoon began to charge the atmosphere as he gazed unrelentingly into my eyes. It wasn't until the head start, my head started to swim that I realized I wasn't breathing. How many times does she do this? Because she like, forgets she's breathing a lot, not breathing a lot. <laughs> <laughs> when I drew in a, a jagged breath, the, breaking the stillness, his, he closed his eyes. Bella, I think you should go inside now. His low voice was rough, his eyes on the clouds again. I opened the door. The arctic drift that burst into the car helped me clear my head. Afraid I might stumble into my, in my woozy state, I stepped carefully out of the car and shut the door behind me without looking back. Is he in Washington? Yes. It doesn't get that cold there. Well, apparently it doesn't work, so okay. Yeah. <laughs> it was snowing like two, three chapters ago, so. <laughs> Pacific Northwest. Um, Anyways, sorry. No, it's okay. Oh, Bella, he called after me, his voice more even. He leaned towards the door, the open window, with a faint smile on his lips. Yes? Tomorrow it's my turn. Your turn to what? He smiled, his smile, his, he smiled wider, flashing his gleaming teeth. Ask the questions. And then he was gone, the car speeding down the street and disappearing around the corner before I could even collect my thoughts. Yeah, he hasn't even answered any of the questions. This is true. I smiled as I thought as I walked it to the house. It was clear he was planning to see me tomorrow, if nothing else. Uh, Bella's not going to be a lawyer. It's just going to sound like that. That night, Edward starred in my dreams, as usual. However, the, climact, the, the climate of my unconsciousness had changed. It thrilled with the same electricity that had charged that afternoon, and I tossed and turned restlessly, waking often. She it, had the dreams. The dreams. It was only in the early hour of the morning that I finally sank into an exhausted, dreamless sleep. When I woke, I was still tired, but edgy as well. I pulled on my brown turtleneck and the inescapable jeans, sighing as I daydreamed of spaghetti straps and shorts. Breakfast was the usual. She's very, she, I forgot. She's from Arizona. She misses Arizona a lot. So we need, we, much. We might have forgotten. We needed a reminder. We needed a reminder. <laughs> Don't worry. Soon she'll have a very good reason to stay in the cloudy area. <laughs> Good. Uh, breakfast was the usual quiet event I expected. Charlie's fried eggs. Charlie fried eggs for himself. I had my bowl of cereal. I wondered if he had forgotten about this Saturday. He answered my unspoken question as he stood up to take his plate to the sink. About this Saturday, he began walking across the kitchen and turning on the faucet. I cringed. Yes, Dad? 
Are you still set on going to Seattle? He asked. That was the plan, I grimaced, wishing he hadn't brought it up so I wouldn't have to compose carefully, compose careful half-truths. So he squeaked some dish soap on this place and swirled it around with the brush. And you're sure you can't make it back in time for the dance? This is, she's not, she's using Seattle as an excuse to not go to the dance. Right, so. the whole homecoming dance, right? Yes, yeah, because yeah. all the boys wanted to ask her. Right, of course, because mm-hmm. she's the new person from Arizona. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a normal human from Arizona, Tucson, Arizona. <laughs> Very normal. Um, I'm not going to the dance, Dad. I glared. Didn't anyone ask you? He asked, trying to hide his concern by focusing on ritzing the plate. I sidestepped the minefield. It's a girl's choice. Oh, he frowned as he dried his plate. Then why didn't you ask anyone yourself? <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't dance. She's too clumsy. Right, of course. Yes. She did hit herself in the face with a racket earlier today. <laughs> I sympathized with him. It must be a hard thing to be a father, living in fear that your daughter would meet a boy she liked, but also having to worry if she didn't. How? Yes, that could happen. <laughs> how, you could date a vampire. Yeah, that's worse. Mm-hmm. How ghastly it would be, I thought, shuddering, if Charlie had even the slightest inkling of exactly what I did like. <laughs> Charlie, le- Charlie left then with a goodbye wave, and I went upstairs to brush my teeth and gather my books. When I heard the cruiser pull away, I could only wait a few seconds before I had to peek out of my window. The silver car was already there, waiting in Charlie's spot on the driveway. I bound down the stairs and out the door, wondering how long this bizarre routine would continue. I never wanted it to end. He waited in the car, not appearing to watch as I shut the door behind me, without bothering to lock the deadbolt. I walked to the car, pausing shyly before opening the door, stepping in. He was smiling, relaxed, and as usual, perfect and beautiful to an excruciating degree. Good morning. His voice was silky. He's too pretty. Too pretty. Perfect and beautiful. Perfect and beautiful. (laughs) Too pretty is a sign of danger. (laughs) That actually is true. Vampires! Mm -hmm. (laughs) How are you today? His eyes roamed over my face, as if his question was something more than a simple curiosity. You know, Good, you thank you. Some interesting dreams on us, mommy. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Good, thank you. I was always good, much more than good, when I was near him. His gaze lingered on the circles under my eyes. You look tired. I couldn't sleep, I confessed, automatically swinging my hair around my shoulder to provide some measure of cover. What? She likes to use her hair as a... She used that as a trick earlier. Oh, God. <laughs> Um, neither could I, he teased as he started the engine. I was becoming used to the quiet purr. I was sure the roar of my truck would scare me whenever I got to drive it again. I laughed. I guessed it. I laughed. I guess that's right. I suppose I slept just a bit more than you did. I'd wager you did. So what did you do last night? I asked. He chuckled. Not a chance. It's my day to ask questions. He's trying to get out of saying he watched you sleep, girl. (laughs) Very true. Oh, that's right. What did you want to know? My forehead creased. I couldn't imagine anything about me that could be in any way interesting to him. What's your favorite color? He asked, his face grave. What's your favorite color? Very serious. I rolled my eyes. It changes from day to day. What's your favorite color today? He was still solemn. Probably brown. I tended, I tended to dress according to my mood. He snorted, dropping his serious expression. Brown? He asked skeptically. Sure. Brown is warm. I miss brown. Everything that's supposed to be brown. Tree trunks, rocks, dirt. It's all covered up by squishy green stuff here. I complained. She's not looking hard enough. (laughs) She, I thought she was, oh no. I thought she was going to say it was brown because of his eyes, but apparently not. (laughs) No, you're just much more smooth than she is. Yeah. Brown, my favorite color, because that's the color of your eyes. That's all she keeps noticing. Um, He seemed fascinated by my little rant. He considered for a moment, staring into my eyes. You're right, he decided serious again. Brown is warm. He reached over swiftly, but somehow still hesitant to sweep my hair back behind my shoulder. We were at the school now, or we were at the school by now. He turned back to me as he pulled into a parking space. What music is in your CD player right now? He asked. 2005. (laughs) CDs, yeah. His face is somber somber as if he asked for a murder confession. I realized I never removed the CD Phil had given me, 
When I said the name of the band, he smiled crookedly, a peculiar expression in his eyes. He flipped open a compartment under his car CD player, pulled out one of 30 CDs, 30 or so CDs that were jammed into the small space and handed it to me. Debussy like this, he raised his eyes. Did I say that right? Is it Debussy? Debussy. Okay. Yeah. It was the same CD. I examined the familiar cover art, keeping my eyes down. It continued like that for the rest of the day. While he walked me to English, when, we met, when he met me after Spanish, all through the lunch hour, he questioned me relentlessly about every insignificant detail of my existence. Movies that I liked and hated, the few places I'd been and the many places I wanted to go, and books, endlessly books. I, he's a paradise. <laughs> I couldn't remember the last time I'd talked so much. More often than not, I felt self-conscious. Certainly I must be boring him. But the absolute absorption of his face and his never-ending stream of questions compelled me to continue. Mostly his questions were easy, only a few triggering my easy, my easy blushes. But then I, but when I did flush, it, was brought, it brought on a whole new round of questions, such as the time he asked about my favorite gemstone, and I blurted out Topaz before thinking, oh, that's the eyes thing. Eyes. <laughs> He'd been flinging questions at me with such speed that I felt like I was taking one of those Psych psychiatric tests where you answer with the first word that comes to mind. I was sure he would continue down whatever mental list he was following, except for the blush. My face reddened because, until very recently, my favorite gemstone was garnet. It was impossible, while staring into his topaz eyes, not to remember the reason for the switch. <laughs> and naturally, he wouldn't rest until I admitted why I was embarrassed. Tell me, he finally commanded, after persuasion failed failed only because I kept my eyes safely away from his face. It's the color of your eyes today. I sighed, <laughs> surrendering, staring down my hands as I fiddled with a piece of my hair. I suppose if you asked me in two weeks, I'd say onyx. Oh, God. I'd given more information than necessary in my unwilling honesty, and I worried it would provoke the strange anger that flared whenever I slipped and revealed too clearly how obsessed I was. But his pause was very short. What kind of flowers do you prefer? He fired off. I sighed in relief and continued with the psychoanalysis. Biology was a, compli Biology was a complication again. Edward had continued with his quizzing up until Mr. Banner entered the room, dragging the audiovisual frame again. And then you wonder why other people ask you what's up with you and that Cullen kid? <laughs> like, he's literally following you around like a puppy, well, like asking you questions. They're secretly dating now. You know. Secretly. I think everyone knows. I think everyone knows. This is true. Do you want to maybe take over and like, then we can go to like this breaking point here instead? Cause oh, we got that. Yeah, we got options. All yeah. right. I feel, I'm feeling like I need a drink of you my drink. Take, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. take some and you, break. You can take over now that they're about to go back into, <laughs> yeah, into biology. biology class. All right. Biology was a complication again. Edward had continued with his quizzing up until Mr. Banner entered the room. Is there, is there science professor Bruce Banner? Maybe. I think it is. I like it. New, new head cannon head acquired. Cannon. Dragging the audiovisual frame again. As the teacher approached the light switch, I noticed Edward slide his chair slightly further away from mine. It didn't help. As soon as the room was dark, there was the same electric spark, the same restless craving to stretch my hand across the short space and touch his cold skin as yesterday. Who gets two video days in a row? Might be a long video. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I leaned forward on the table, resting my chin on my folded arms, my hidden fingers gripping the table's edge as I fought to ignore the irrational longing that unsettled me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I didn't look at him, afraid that if he was looking at me, it would only make self-control that much harder. You just really want to make out in the back of this class. They're very, very horny. <laughs> They're so... Oh my gosh. I sincerely tried to watch the movie. No, you didn't. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the hour, I had no idea what I'd just seen. I sighed in relief again when Mr. Banner turned the lights on, finally glancing at Edward. He was looking at me, his eyes ambivalent. Rude. Oh. He rose in silence and then stood still, waiting for me. We walked towards the gym in silence, like yesterday. And also like yesterday, he touched my face world wordlessly, this time with the back of his cool hand, stroking once from my temple to my jaw before he turned and walked away. That is very Victorian, too. <laughs> <laughs> Jim passed quickly as I watched Mike's one-man badminton show. 
He didn't speak to me today, either in response to my vacant expression or because he was still angry about our squabble yesterday. Look, Rob. <laughs> I know this is going to make us go over. It would not have been a squabble if you did not make it a squabble. <laughs> he asked you a question. A very normal question. A very normal question. You did not have to react. <laughs> Mike is great. <laughs> I will be taking no further questions Team at this Mike. time. You're, Team you're, Mike. You're the, the president of the Mike <laughs> fans of the Mike fan club, yes. Um, somewhere in a corner of my mind, I felt bad about that. Good. <laughs> but I couldn't concentrate on him. I hurried to change afterwards, ill at ease, knowing the faster I moved, the sooner I would be with Edward. <laughs> The pressure made me more clumsy than usual, but eventually I made it out the door, feeling the same release when I saw him standing there, a wide smile automatically spreading across my face. He smiled in reaction before launching into more cross-examination. His questions were different now, though, not as easily answered. He wanted to know what I missed about home, insisting on descriptions of anything he wasn't familiar with. We sat in front of Charlie's house for hours as the sky darkened and rain plummeted around us in a sudden deluge. I tried to describe impossible things like the scent of creosote. Creoso, creoso? I don't know. I'm going to look it up. <laughs> Welcome Is to the Arizona lake. I mean, I'm assuming it's thing. a plant. It's a bush. Pronunciation. Creosote you did it. Good job, Maine. Nice. All right, creosote. Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. This is librarianship, everyone. <laughs> I tried to describe impossible things like the scent of creosote. Bitter, slightly resinous, but still pleasant. The high, keening sound of the cicadas in July. The feathery barrenness of the trees. The very size of the sky, extending white blue from horizon to horizon, barely interrupted by the low mountains covered with purple volcanic rock. The hardest thing to explain was why it was so beautiful to me. To justify a beauty that didn't depend on the sparse, spiny vegetation that often looked half dead, a beauty that had more to do with the exposed shape of the land, with the shallow bowls of valleys between the craggy hills and the way they held on to the sun. I found myself using my hands as I tried to describe it to him. Sorry. One, what teenage girl has ever looked this much at? Anything? Stephanie occasionally like just gets really into like descriptions. Right. Like she described like the the beach like for yeah. three pages straight. But and... also I gotta say using my hands <laughs> to describe it, and also I guess I shouldn't be surprised if she likes like a barren wasteland that she's into Edward. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good burn. Thank you. <laughs> His quiet probing questions kept me talking freely. Forgetting in the dim light of the storm to be embarrassed for monopolizing the conversation. He literally said he was going to ask you questions, girl. Like, and actually, like, the one point I will give Edward in his favor is he's actually asking questions mm -hmm. about her and not just trying to use this as a way to talk more about himself. True. Yeah. That is the only point I will give him. <laughs> the tiniest of green the flags. <laughs> no, it's not even a green flag. It's a beige flag. It should be, it should be standard. Finally, when I had finished detailing my cluttered room at home, he paused instead of responding with another question. Are you finished? I asked in relief. Not even close, but your father will be home soon. Charlie! Why does she call him Charlie? Do we know? Uh, well, she doesn't call him Charlie to his, his face, face, but like, but she just calls him okay. Charlie. Yeah. He wasn't in her life very much right. growing up. I suddenly recalled his existence, depressing, mm -hmm. and sighed. I looked out at the rain-darkened sky, but it gave nothing away. How late is it? I wondered out loud as I glanced at the clock. I was surprised by the time. Charlie would be driving home now. It's twilight, Edward mummered. <laughs> it's the name of the book! <laughs> it's twilight, Edward murmured, looking at the western horizon, obscured as it was with clouds. His voice was thoughtful, as if his mind were somewhere far away, maybe about writing a book called Twilight. I stared at him as he gazed unseeingly out the windshield. I was still staring when his eyes suddenly shifted back to mine. It's the safest time of day for us, he said, answering the unspoken question in my eyes. What question? <laughs> See, it's oh, it started. <laughs> now you guys can hear that I'm also watching this. <laughs> <sighs> Whatever. Um, but also the saddest in a way. The end of another day. The return of the night. Okay. 
Darkness is so predictable, don't you think? He smiled wistfully. What did he, like, launch into the soliloquy? He's supposed to be, like, a hundred years old. <laughs> this, okay. I like the night. Without the dark, we'd never see the stars. <laughs> I frowned. Not that you see them here much. He laughed, and the mood abruptly lightened. Charlie will be here in a few minutes. So, unless you want to tell him that you'll be with me Saturday, he raised one eyebrow. Thanks, but no thanks. I gathered my books, realizing I was stiff from sitting still so long. So is it my turn tomorrow, then? Certainly not. His face was teasingly outraged. I told you I wasn't done, didn't I? <laughs> what more is there? You'll find out tomorrow. <laughs> he reached across open to open my door for me. That's just so awkward, though. Thank you. <laughs> get out, man. Like, get out and open the door. And his sudden proximity sent my heart into frenzied palpitations. But his hand froze on the handle. Not good, he muttered. What is it? I was surprised to see that his jaw was clenched, his eyes disturbed. He glanced at me for a brief second. Another complication, he said glumly. He flung the door open in one swift movement and then moved, almost cringed, swiftly away from me. The flash of headlights through the rain caught my attention as a dark car pulled up to the curb just a few feet away, facing us. Charlie's around the corner, he warned, staring through the downpour at the other vehicle. I hopped out at once, despite my confusion and curiosity. The rain was louder as it glanced off my jacket. I tried to make out the shapes in the front seat of the other car, but it was too dark. Do you not recognize voices, Bella? <laughs> um, but it was too dark. I could see Edward illuminated in the glare of the new car's headlights. He was still staring ahead, his gaze locked on something or someone I couldn't see. His expression was a strange mix of frustration and defiance. Then he revved the engine, rude, and the tires squealed against the wet pavement. The Volvo was out of sight in seconds. Hey, Bella, called a familiar husky voice from the driver's side of the little black car. Jacob, I asked, squinting through the rain. Just then, Charlie's cruiser swung around the corner, his lights shining on the occupants of the car in front of me. Jacob was already climbing out, his wide grin visible even through the darkness. In the passenger seat was a much older man, a heavyset man with a memorable face, a face that overflowed the che here we go again. The cheeks resting against his shoulders, with creases running through the russet skin like an old leather jacket, and the surprisingly familiar eyes, black eyes that seemed at the same time both too young and too ancient for the broad face they were set in. Jacob's father, Billy Black. I knew him immediately, though in the more than five years since I'd seen him last, I'd managed to forget his name when Charlie had spoken of him my first day here. He was staring at me, scrutinizing my face, so I smiled tentatively at him. His eyes were wide, as if in shock or fear, his nostrils, flare. My sm his nostrils flared. My smile faded. Another complication, Edward had said. Billy still stared at me with intense, anxious eyes. I groaned internally. Had Billy recognized Edward so easily? I mean, <laughs> he's not exactly low-key. Who else drives a Volvo? A silver <laughs> Volvo. In forks. In forks. Could he really believe the impossible legends his son had scoffed at? The answer was clear in Billy's eyes. Yes. Yes, he could. Also, girl, you believe that. And impossible legends that have proven to be, be true. true. <laughs> yeah. Let me take a quick... Chapter 12. <laughs> Balancing. Billy, Charlie called as soon as he got out of the car. I turned towards the house, beckoned, beckoning to Jacob as I ducked un under the porch. I heard Charlie greeting them loudly behind me. I'm going to pretend I didn't see you behind the wheel, Jake, he said disapprovingly. We get permits early on the res, Jacob said while I unlocked the door and flicked on the porch light. Sure you do, Charlie laughed. I have to get around somehow. I recognized Billy's resonant voice easily despite the ears. The sound of it made me feel suddenly younger, a child. You're still a child, girl. <laughs> Truly. You're still a child. I went, she's 16, right? She's 16 and, and Jacob's 14. So he shouldn't have a permit yet. Well, yeah. actually, but actually, I got my permit at 14. And oh, months. okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> in Michigan, it was like you had to be 14 in like seven months to start like driver's ed. Mm -hmm. And then when you finished driver's ed, you got your permit. So oh. I was actually 14 when I got my permit. Well, either way, he's two years younger than her. Okay, yeah, he is two years younger than her. I also, to be fair, was driving my grandpa's car when I was 10, so. <laughs> I went inside, leaving the door open behind me and turning on lights before I hung up my jacket. Then I stood in the door, watching anxiously as Charlie and Jacob helped Billy out of the car and into his wheelchair. 
I backed out of the way as the three of them hurried in, shaking off the rain. This is a surprise, Charlie was saying. It's been too long, Billy answered. I hope it's not a bad time. His dark eyes flashed up to me again, their expression unreadable. You know, like, it could be the werewolf vampire thing, but it also could be this guy is a creep and Billy knows. Oh, Billy's yeah. like, that guy's a creep and my friend's daughter is in a car with him. Yeah, <laughs> true. No, it's great. I hope you can stay for the game. <laughs> Isn't it, like, Friday night? Isn't there always a game? Well, then it's high school football. No. And that's not always on <laughs> TV. I'm sure there's a game. There's <laughs> a game, yeah. Maybe maybe they're watching women's soccer. Who knows? That's it. That's it. Uh, also, I'm pretty sure Stephanie Meyer doesn't know anything about football. <laughs> Jacob grinned. I think that's the plan. Our TV broke last week. Billy made a face at his son. And of course, Jacob was anxious to see Bella again, he added. Mm -hmm. Jacob scowled and ducked his head while I fought back a surge of remorse. Maybe I'd been too convincing on the beach, I'll say. Mm -hmm. Are you hungry, I asked, turning towards the kitchen. I was eager to escape Billy's searching gaze. No, we, we ate just before we came, Jacob answered. How about you, Charlie? You said he did. She didn't call him that to his face. Oh, I thought she didn't. She just called him Charlie to his face. Never. I called over my shoulder as I fled around the corner. Sure, he replied, his voice moving in the direction of the front room and the TV. I could hear Billy's chair following. The grilled cheese sandwiches were in the frying pan, and I was slicing up a tomato when I sensed someone behind me. So how are things, Jacob asked. So the difference between a 14-year-old and a 16-year-old, vast. Yes, indeed. Indeed. Pretty good, I smiled. His enthusiasm was hard to resist. How about you? Did you finish your car? No, he frowned. I still need parts. We borrowed that one. He pointed with his thumb in the direction of the front yard. Sorry, I haven't seen any... What was it you were looking for? Master Cylinder, he grinned. Is something wrong with the truck, he asked suddenly. <laughs> no. Oh, I just wondered because you weren't driving it. Mm -hmm. Subtle. Subtle. <laughs> I stared down at the pan, pulling up the edge of a sandwich to check the bottom side. I got a ride with a friend. Nice ride. Jacob's voice was admiring. I didn't recognize the driver, though. I thought I knew most of the kids around here. Mm -hmm. Digging. Did. I nodded noncommittally, keeping my eyes down as I flipped sandwiches. My dad seemed to know him from somewhere. Jacob, can you hand me some plates? They're in the cupboard over the sink. Sure. He got the plates in silence. I hoped he would let it drop now. So who was it? <laughs> yeah. Getting around the bush well, again, working. Yeah, like people asking totally normal questions though. Like who, who who were you in the car with? He asked, setting two plates on the counter next to me. I sighed in defeat. Edward Cullen. To my surprise, he laughed. I glanced up at him. He looked a little embarrassed. Guess that expl explains it then, he said. I wondered why my dad was acting so strange. That's right, I faked an innocent expression. He doesn't like the Collins. Superstitious old man, Jacob muttered under his breath. Until you get your stuff. And it gets mm -hmm. weird for Jacob. <laughs> you don't think he'd say anything to Charlie. I couldn't help asking the words coming out in a low rush. Jacob stared at me for a moment, and I couldn't read the expression in his dark eyes. I doubt it, he finally answered. I think Charlie chewed him out pretty good last time. They haven't spoken much since. Tonight is sort of a reunion, I think. I don't think he'd bring it up again. Oh, I said, trying to sound indifferent. What, what are you talking about? Um, because, uh, so, they don't they don't they like, like the Cullens, Cullens because they know that they're the vampires. Because they're like, werewolves, um, right? And so Billy had, like, told, uh, Billy had told, like, uh, Charlie to be careful of them and Charlie got real mad because like Dr. Cullen is like really respected in the town and stuff okay. like that so so like Billy's like Billy's trying to be like they're dangerous but can't say why and, right. like without sounding crazy himself and so so Charlie's like I don't have time for this no. yeah yeah um okay I stayed in the front room after I carried the food out to Charlie pretending to watch the game while Jacob chattered at me I was really listening to the men's conversation, watching for any sign that Billy was about to rat me out, trying to think of ways to stop him if he began. Look, the other thing, sorry. No. You, you triggered my football brain. Oh, no. <laughs> the thing about it being a Friday night <laughs> is there's no one who is so interested in a high school football game that they're going to drive to their friend's house specifically to do this. This would have made much more sense to happen on a Saturday afternoon or a Sunday I morning. <laughs> Just, sorry, you tripped my football brain. It's that just is so funny. You can't let it go. I can't I let love go. it. 
I can't let it go. The only thing this could possibly be is high school football. And, like, no one is this into high school football. Like, my dad, <laughs> who is very into all sports, is not this into high school football. That yeah. he would be like, son, I need you to borrow a car and drive it to my friend's house who I had a fight with so we can use this TV. Yeah. Now, if it was, like, Oregon State University, the Ducks, <laughs> Oregon playing, like, you know, U of M, I could see it. I just let you know. It's fine. <laughs> this has been your football moment. Bye. Thank you. The season starts soon. You guys won't have to deal with this from me. Uh, anyways, the game. Um, <laughs> the big game. The big game. Not the big game. <laughs> it was a long night. I had a lot of homework that was going undone. It's also Friday, girl. <laughs> but I was afraid to leave Billy alone with Charlie. Finally, the game ended. With no, no description of it. I just, I'm sorry. Not even a sport. Not even a sport, just the game. Mm -hmm. Like, what was it? It's actually secretly, like, um... I like that you said women's soccer. Curling. Women's soccer is curling. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm changing my mind. It's curling. Curling back like to Canada. Are you and your friends coming back to the beach soon, Jacob asked, as he pushed his father over the lip of the threshold. I'm not sure I hedged. That was fun, Charlie, Billy said. Come up for the next game, <laughs> Charlie encouraged. Sure, sure, Billy said. We'll be here. Have a good night. His eyes shifted to mine, and his smile disappeared. You take care, Bella, he added seriously. <laughs> Thanks, I muttered, looking away. I headed for the stairs while Charlie waved from the doorway. Wait, Bella, he said. I cringed. Had Billy gotten something in before I joined them in the living room? But Charlie was relaxed, still grinning from the unexpected visit. I didn't get a chance to talk to you tonight. How was your day? Good. I hesitated with one foot on the first stair, searching for details I could safely share. My badminton team won all four games. Team. Wow, I didn't know you could play badminton. Well, actually, I can't, but my partner is really good, I admitted. Who is it? He asked with token interest. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Um, Mike Newton, I told him reluctantly. Oh, yeah, you said you were friends with the Newton kid. He perked up. Nice family. He mused for a minute. Why didn't you ask him to the dance this weekend? Dad, I groaned. He's kind of dating my friend Jessica. Besides, you know I can't dance. Oh, yeah, he muttered. Then he smiled at me apologetically. So I guess it's a good you'll be gone Saturday. I've made plans to go fishing with the guys from the station. The weather is supposed to be real warm. But if you wanted to put your trip off until someone could go with you, I'd stay home. I know I'd leave you here alone too much. He's a good dad. He's very sweet. He's, he's trying. Because he, he works two jobs and he loves his kids. <laughs> dad, you're doing a great job. I smiled, hoping my relief Aww. didn't show. I've never minded being alone. I'm too much like you. I winked at him, and his smile, and he smiled his crinkly-eyed smile. I slept better that night, too tired to dream again. When I woke to the pearl-gray morning, my mood was blissful. The tense evening with Billy and Jacob seemed harmless enough now. I decided to forget it completely. Bad idea. <laughs> I caught myself whistling while I was pulling out the front part of my hair back into a barrette. Oh my god. That is so 2005. <laughs> I did. No, no, no. It's not oh. just that. It's this part, little and then you do pony. a little poof. Yep. And then you put, and then you put a barrette in. That is the most two thousand five sentence. <laughs> and we read about CD players earlier. <laughs> I caught myself whistling while I was pulling the front part of my hair back into a barrette, and later again as I skipped down the stairs, Charlie noticed. You're cheerful this morning, he commented over breakfast. I shrugged. It's Friday. Oh, it's worse. That was Thursday night. What about Thursday night? Isn't there Thursday night football or no? There is an NFL game on Thursday night. Okay. So this changes everything. Oh, no. <laughs> Ignore the rants for But actually, I don't remember what year Thursday night football became a thing. It's Probably still fairly not by now. Yeah, you're right. It was still a fairly recent phenomenon. I do not know if Thursday night football was a thing in 2005. <laughs> hey, Zoe, do me a favor. Google for me, when did Thursday night football become a thing? And we may be able to take back my whole rant or... It will it probably stand will be it. worse. <laughs> November 23rd, 2006. It was <laughs> that was this one! Oh, no. Yes! Oh, no. <laughs> Dang. It's even worse. Okay, great. Back to I have no idea what they were watching. <laughs> what were you watching? What game was what there? What game? 
Oh my god, I'm serious. I feel like pat myself on the back for knowing way too much about football to be like, no, Thursday Night Football didn't exist. Definitely it's didn't exist when she was writing it. Yeah. Definitely not when she was writing it. <laughs> no. And the book came out in 2005? Yeah. 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 Okay, so. so. Either she predicted Thursday Night Football, in which case Stephanie Meyer may be a witch, or... <laughs> She doesn't know anything about sports. <laughs> I think that was evident by her just calling it the, the game. game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> apologies. I'm sure that'll not get clicked for social. Oh. <laughs> um, it's Friday. <laughs> I hurried so I'd be ready to go the second Charlie left. I had my bag ready, shoes on, teeth brushed, but even though I rushed to the door, as soon as I was sure Charlie would be out of sight, Edward was faster. He was waiting in his shiny car, windows down, engine off. I didn't hesitate this time, climbing in the passenger side quickly, the sooner to see his face. <sighs> he grinned his crooked smile at me, stopping my breath and my heart. I couldn't imagine how an angel could be any more glorious. There was nothing about him that could be improved upon. <laughs> He's still stuck in a teenage boy body. <laughs> how did you sleep, he asked. I wonder if he had any idea how appealing his voice was. Fine. How was your night? You know, it's even worse knowing he's watching your sleep mm-hmm. than he constantly asks her how yeah. she slept. Fine. How was your night? Pleasant. His smile was amused. I felt like I was missing an inside joke. You are! He was watching you! So icky. Can I ask what you did? I asked. No. He grinned. <laughs> today is still mine. He wanted to know about people today. More about Renee, her hobbies, what we've done in our free time together. Renee's her mom, right? Yes. that's how they get the Renesme thing yes. later. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then the one grandmother I'd known, my few school friends, embarrassing me when he asked about boys I'd dated. I was relieved that I'd never really dated anyone, so that particular conversation couldn't last long. He seemed as surprised as Jessica and Angela by my lack of romantic history. She's 16. She's 16. (laughs) So you've never met anyone you wanted? He asked in a serious tone that made me wonder what he was thinking about. I was grudgingly honest. Not in Phoenix. His lips pressed together into a hard line. We were in the cafeteria at this point. The day had sped by in the blur that was rapidly becoming routine. I took advantage of his brief pause to take a bite of my bagel. I should have let you drive yourself today, he announced, a propos of nothing when I, while I chewed. Why? I demanded. I'm leaving with Alice after lunch. Oh, I blinked, bewildered and disappointed. That's okay, it's not that far of a walk. He frowned at me impatiently. I'm not going to make you walk home. We'll go get your truck and leave it here for you. I don't have my key with me, I sighed. I really don't mind walking. What I minded was losing my time with him. (laughs) He shook his head. Your truck will be here and the key will be in the ignition. Unless you're afraid someone might steal it. He laughed at the thought. You should never laugh about this. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) All right, I agreed, pursing my lips. I was pretty sure my key was in the pocket of a pair of jeans I wore Wednesday under a pile of clothes in the laundry room. Even if he broke into my house or whatever he was planning, he'd never find it. He seemed to feel the challenge in my consent. He smirked, overconfident. So where are you going? I asked casually as I as ca- oh, sorry. So where are you going? I asked as casually as I could manage. Hunting, he answered grimly. If I'm going to be alone with you tomorrow, I'm going to take whatever precautions I can. His face grew morose and pleading. You can always cancel me. <laughs> I looked down, afraid of the persuasive power of his eyes. I refused to be convinced to fear him, no matter how real the danger might be. Girl. Very real. <laughs> Very nice. Girl. It doesn't matter, I repeated in my head. No, I whispered, glancing back at his face. I can't. (laughs) Perhaps you're right, he murmured bleakly. His eyes seemed to darken in color as I watched. Okay. I changed the subject. What time will I see you tomorrow, I asked, already depressed by the thought of him leaving now. That depends. It's a Saturday. Don't you want to sleep in, he offered. No, I answered (laughs) too fast. He restrained a smile. The same time as usual, then, he decided. Will Charlie be there? No, he's fishing tomorrow. I beamed at the memory of how conveniently things had worked out. His voice turned sharp. And if you don't come home, what will he think? <laughs> that was such a red flag. Oh my gosh. Okay. I have no idea, I answered coolly. He knows I've been meaning to do the laundry. Maybe he'll think I fell in the washer. That was funny, though. <laughs> he scowled at me and I scowled back. His anger was much more impressive than mine. What are you hunting tonight, I asked, when I was sure I'd lost the flowering contest. Whatever we find in the park, we aren't going far. He seemed amused by my casual reference to his secret realities. Why are you going with Alice, I wondered. Alice is the most 
supportive. <laughs> he frowned as he spoke. And the others? I asked timidly, what are they? His brow puckered for a brief moment. Incredulous for the most part. So am I. <laughs> I peeked quickly behind me at his family. They sat staring off in different directions, exactly the same as the first time I'd seen them. Only now they were, they were four. Their beautiful bronze-haired brother sat across from me, his golden eyes troubled. They don't like me, I guess. That's not it, he disagreed, but his eyes were too innocent. They don't understand why I can't leave you alone. Neither do I. That's like literally what she's gonna say. I grimace, neither do I for that matter. Okay, we're on the same page. <laughs> no one understands it, Edward. No one understands it, Edward. <laughs> Edward shook his head slowly, rolling his eyes towards the ceiling before he met my gaze again. I told you, you don't see yourself clearly at all. You're not like anyone I've ever known. You fascinate me. <laughs> I glared at him, sure he was teasing now. He smiled as he deciphered my expression. Having the advantages I do, he murmured, touching his forehead discreetly. <laughs> I have a better than average grasp of human nature. People are predictable, but you, you never do what I expect. You always take me by surprise. Why? Because she like, She's not like the other girls. She's not like the other girl. Mm -hmm. I looked away, my eyes wandering back to his family, embarrassed and dissatisfied. His words made me feel like a science experiment. I wanted to laugh at myself for expecting anything else. <laughs> that part is easy enough to explain, he continued. I felt his eyes on my face, but I couldn't look at him yet, afraid he might read the chagrin in my eyes. A lot of usable eyes. <laughs> but there's more, and it's not so easy to put into words. I was still staring at the Cullens while he spoke. Suddenly, Rosalie, his blonde and breathtaking sister, turned to look at me. No, not to look, to glare, with dark, cold eyes. I wanted to look away, but her gaze held me until Edward broke off mid-sentence and made an angry noise under his breath. It was almost a hiss. Rosalie turned her head, and I was relieved to be free. I looked back at Edward, and I knew he could see the confusion and fear that widened my eyes. His face was tight as he explained. I'm sorry about that. She's just worried. You see, it's dangerous for more than just me if, after spending so much time with you so publicly, he looked down. If, if this ends badly. He dropped his head into his hands as he had that night in Port Angeles. His anguish was plain. I yearned to comfort him, but I was at a loss to know how. My hand reached towards him involuntarily. Quickly, though, I dropped it to the table, fearing that my touch would only make things worse. I realized slowly that his words should frighten me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I waited for that fear to come, but all I could seem to feel was an ache for his pain. And frustration. Frustration that Rosalie had interrupted whatever he was about to say. That's not what you should be frustrated about. <laughs> I didn't know how to bring it up again. He still had his head in his hands. I tried to speak in a normal voice. And you have to leave now? Yes. He raised his face. It was serious for a moment, and then his mood shifted and he smiled. It's probably for the best. We still have 15 minutes of that wretched movie left to endure in biology. I don't think I could take it anymore. <laughs> I started. Alice, her short inky hair and a halo of spiky disarray around her exquisite elfin face, was suddenly standing behind his shoulder. Her slight frame was willowy, graceful even in its absolute stillness. He greeted her without w looking away from me. Alice? Edward, she answered, her high soprano voice almost as attractive as his. Alice, Bella, Bella, Alice. He introduced us, gesturing casually with his hand, a wry smile on his face. Hello, Bella. Her brilliant obsidian eyes were unreadable, but her smile was friendly. It's nice to finally meet you. Edward flashed a dark look at her. Hi, Alice, I murmured shyly. Are you ready? She asked him. His voice was aloof. Nearly. I'll meet you at the car. She left without another word. Her walk was so fluid, so sinuous, I felt a sharp pang of jealousy. Should I say have fun, or is that the wrong sentiment, I asked, turning back to him. No, have fun works as well as anything, he grinned. Have fun, then. I worked to sound wholehearted. Of course, I didn't fool him. I'll try. He still grinned. And you try to be safe, please. Safe in forks, what a challenge. For you, it is a challenge, his jaw hardened. Promise. I promise to try to be safe, I recited. I'll do the laundry tonight. That ought to be fraught with peril. Don't fall in, he mocked. I'll do my best. He stood then, and I rose too. I'll see you tomorrow, I sighed. It seems like a long time to you, doesn't it? He mused. Well, <laughs> she's not watching you sleep, Edward. I nodded glumly. I'll be there in the morning, he promised, smiling his crooked smile. He reached across the table to touch my face, lightly brushing again along my cheekbone again. 
Then he turned and walked away. I stared after him until he was gone. That's probably swine. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I cropped there. Oh. Um, so, yeah. Bye, Edward. He's Bye, gotta, Edward. He's got to go hunting. Hunting. Being specific about that. Um, that fun. <laughs> yeah, thanks for reading that with me, Anne. Oh, so yes. riveting, right? So <laughs> riveting. <laughs> um, so that was Lunchtime Listens on our Twitch channel. If you missed anything or if you want to read any of the previous chapters, they are on our YouTube channel. The recording for this one will be up on our channel by Thursday. Um, you can look for that by searching the Deerfield Public Library on YouTube. And with that, oh, we will not see you next week, right? Because we're not here next week, right? right? Yeah, it's Labor Day next week. It's Labor so Day next the week. The library is closed, so we will not be doing lunchtime lessons. So we will see you in two weeks to continue with Twilight. All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye.